almost always we're interested in two-sided confidence intervals for parameters, meaning like we have a lower endpoint and an upper endpoint of our interval. But in some cases, we actually are just interested in maybe an upper bound, or we're just interested in a lower bound. And so in those cases, we could create a one-sided confidence interval for our parameter. So if we look at, we will look at the confidence interval for mu when sigma is unknown, and get an upper bound confidence interval and a confidence interval that gives a lower bound as well. All right, so first, just to get our notation down, here's our t distribution with n minus one degrees of freedom. And we will actually be looking for um, just alpha in this tail. So we're looking for this quantile here, t alpha, n minus one, so that we have alpha in that tail there. All right, so then a one-sided confidence interval that gives a lower bound for mu is going to be our sample mean minus that quantile that we just found times s divided by root n, comma, infinity. So we have a lower bound, and then we don't care about the upper bound, so it just goes off to infinity. Similarly, for our upper bound confidence interval, if we want to have a one-sided confidence interval that gives an upper bound for mu, our lower bound we just said we don't care about because we're only interested in the upper bound. So it's going to go from negative infinity up to our sample mean plus t alpha with n minus one degrees of freedom, in other words, that same quantile there, times s divided by root n. So this is how we could get a confidence interval that gives a lower bound for mu and a confidence interval that gives an upper bound for mu. All right. so. These two ideas are pretty similar, so we're only going to prove one of them, and it's pretty much the same sort of proof as we've been doing this whole time. So first we go off and find this T alpha, so that this quantile here, so that we have alpha in that upper tail. So we find that T alpha with n minus one degrees of freedom, so that a t distribution with n minus one degrees of freedom is less than or equal to t alpha equals one minus alpha. So again, we have alpha in the upper tail, one minus alpha in that lower tail. All right, now we can just sub in um, x bar minus mu divided by s over root n for our t because we know that this quantity, this random variable, has a t distribution with n minus one degrees of freedom. That's what we talked about in the, that last couple of videos. All right, so this is what we're working off. So we come over here and write the probability that x bar minus mu over s divided by root n is less than or equal to t alpha n minus one is equal to one minus alpha. Now, same thing as always, we're trying to get a confidence interval for mu, so let's go ahead and solve for mu. So then we end up, when we solve for mu, we get x bar minus t alpha s divided by root n is less than or equal to mu. So this is true with probability one minus alpha. So in other words, one minus alpha times 100% of confidence intervals formed with this quantity as our lower bound are going to contain our parameter mu. And we can do a similar thing for our upper bound confidence interval, but it's pretty much the same, so I won't do that, but you can go ahead and do that. 